Hi, thank you for joining me. My name is Alvin Hamilton. I'm with Family Fun Tips. Uh, and if you would, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button. That way, when I come out with new content, uh, you will be notified of that. And it also helps me out. Also, if you would, share this. and get I'd like to try to get more people subscribed to my site and get more information out about different things. Tonight, I'm talking about the K40 laser. I know a lot of guys get the K40 laser because it's a nice and expensive laser to use. And I enjoy using it too, but I had to do several upgrades to it, and I'm going to tell you those upgrades now, the ones that I made. So I'll try and make this quick, uh, simple, and easy. If I find out the information on where to get some of this stuff, because it's been over a one-year period that I've upgraded this, and uh, but you can find this stuff online. So let's get started. This is my K40 laser. One of the first things I did with it, I'm going to turn this around, was remove the bed off from this. Uh, the bed on it is okay, but you don't have an adjustable laser, so you only have one height. That bed is set up for that exact size of that laser beam. That laser uh, has to be within a certain uh, distance in order to get the best cut. I found I had a I have another laser, just a little tiny one. This came with it, and it measures the distance between. It's a perfect. It's like two inches, and it measures uh, between the piece that I have. And I'll put a piece in here. So I, let's say if I was cutting this, I'd put this in here, move the laser over near it, and then I would measure and see if that laser comes to the tip of this. If it does, then I know it's within focus range, and I will get the sharpest cut. So you need, you need something like this in order to measure that beam. Um, and you have to, if you look online, there's guys on there that will tell you how to get the best focus out of this. Um, I just found this piece was good. And it, it literally, uh, it's probably just about two inches, I would say. Because my finger from that second knuckle up is two inches. And that's pretty much right on two inches. So you can try it. You can cut you a piece of acrylic or a piece of wood, something like that, about two inches long. Kind of use that to measure it and see if that's where your beam is at. Uh, the other thing I did, once I removed this, the reason I did, uh, I needed to make this adjustable. So whenever I would do something thicker than a eighth inch piece of wood or acrylic or whatever, I needed to adjust it to make it go up and down. So I took this and I bought this from, I think Lowe's, you can get them at Home Depot. It's just like screening or something. It's very flimsy and it's strong enough to hold up what I need. Um, and it works. It's black. So it's that's why I found a lot of guys use the honeycomb that's a little bit thicker and that's fine too um, but I just found that works okay the next thing I bought was this adjustable uh, table I got this pro I think I got it off Amazon too uh, and I have a couple of these I have this size which is a bigger size then I have this size here which is a smaller size they adjust by this little crank right here so they're they're a little on the tight side. I may spray some lithium grease or something on there, see if that can loosen that up. But it's kind of a tight uh, going down. It's not bad, just going up. These are really good. Now the small one, I put Velcro on here, and I put Velcro on the other piece. So whenever I put it on there, I can Velcro it because, <coughs> excuse me, that big piece is a little bit too big for this small table. So I put Velcro on here and I Velcro it on. That way it stays, does move around. The reason I have to was because I was doing some thicker items and this bigger piece here would not go down far enough. So whenever you look at these, look at the distance from the top to the bottom or bottom top, whichever. And it will tell you what the lowest level it will go. It may say an inch, it may say two inches, whatever. But I had to get something that would go down to like an inch in height or so. And uh, that's why I got the smaller one. Smaller ones seem like they go down lower. You might be able to find different. I think I might have another one around here someplace. But for everything I've been doing lately, this has been working. You can see how the lasers kind of burned through that one thing and charred the top of this. But that's okay. It's no big deal. Uh, here's the knob over here to adjust these. I, I have it adjusted just where I need it right now for that type of wood and acrylic. They're both pretty much the same, and that's why I've been working with recently. 
So once I got it adjusted, it's pretty much ready to go. I get fine cuts and I'll show you something. I did just a little bit ago is this right here. It's only an inch big and it's made out of like some kind of a boss, boss make wood, I believe. Um, but uh, it's not that thick. And look at the fine cuts I got on that. I mean, that's some really fine scroll cuts on there. Very fine. I was, I was really impressed with that. The other thing, so that was the, that was probably the first thing I did was remove that, get this, get that other piece. That way I could set the focus where I wanted it. Next thing I bought was this camera up here. Uh, you can, these are two pieces. You get the camera, which is this piece here. And then you get this piece up here, which it, you twist it and you can adjust the camera back and forth. Now I have mine up here on the lid up here. Some guys will mount them other places like down here, shoot across. I don't know. I found this was the best for me. Uh, so I leave my lid open whenever I do any of my stuff. It takes a picture of the bed uh, so I can see where my stuff is. Um, and I Velcroed this on here. So if you're wondering how I got all that to stay, uh, it has uh, Velcro and it's heavy duty. I mean, this stuff's, it's not like your Velcro you use on clothing and stuff. This is like heavy duty Velcro. And I Velcroed the camera onto this base piece they, the base piece onto the lid of my uh, laser. So that's how I have that. And then you have to adjust it. And so I adjusted the camera so I could see the majority of the bed down here. And you would go through the program and you can make your settings and everything. It takes a little while to do it. But once you get it and get it right, I won't say it's dead on, but it's good enough to where if you're cutting a piece of board or something, you can get it close enough to where it, you know, it's not going to be way off. I just like it better than the laser pointers. I had laser pointer at first and it was loose. Every time I go to use it, it would move. I'd always have to realign it. It's just a pain. Plus the battery, the battery, if I forgot to turn it off, it would run down the battery. It's just a mess. So this, even though I paid more for the camera and the, uh, and you also have to have the motherboard as well. Once I paid for all that, I, I mean, I was probably out $150, $70. I forget now, maybe even a little more than that, but it's well worth it uh, to do that. The motherboard was the other thing I did was I replaced the motherboard that's inside here, which is this piece right here. Uh, I replaced that motherboard and I believe I did a video on that. I'm not sure, but this is a board. Uh, the other board works okay, but you can only use the software that comes with the machine. And I like using a program called Lightburn. <clears throat> and Lightburn, uh, again, I think it's like $30 to buy it. Um, and I will show you a picture of that. So this is my computer. Here's the Lightburn software. You can see how I took a picture of the bed with the acrylic on there. And up there is a picture of the camera. You click on that, it takes a snapshot of your bed. You can then move your item wherever you want it. And it pretty much cuts it right in that area. It, if you were to measure, it might be a little off, but for what I'm doing, it, it does a great job. You can adjust your speed. You can adjust everything right from this software. And it's right up here in the corner. So you can adjust uh, it like whenever I cut pieces out, I have it cut three times to make sure it cuts all the way through there. And it, it just works. So that was the second thing I did. That really made a big difference. Um, sometimes you, you have to work with it. I had to just redo my camera recently. I don't know if it's because the lid closed too hard and it threw it off or what. If I had to go through and realign the camera again, but now it's back to where it should be. So that works well. Next upgrade I made, and I will tell you there's another upgrade. Uh, is and there's probably a lot more than what I know about, but this here, this is your blower that sucks out your uh, fumes and things, your smoke. I've seen that they make smaller ones that are shorter. It gives your bed a little bit more uh, width-wise, and you can take this out, and I think it's only held in by four screws. You can take this out, put in the new one, and it'll give you probably another couple inches uh, of space there. 
that's something I haven't done yet. Maybe in the future, I'm not sure. Um, but that that was the that's another thing you could do. Uh, one of the other things I haven't added it yet, but you can get these chain things, and they attach on back here, and they run across here. Now you'll see those in the more expensive units where they'll have these already in there, and that kind of keeps that tubing that you see all loose back there keeps it all nice and neat. And then it doesn't get in the way. And this kind of goes back and forth as the laser goes. I just haven't put that on yet. That's another upgrade there. So the last upgrade I made, uh, which was just recently, uh, was air assist. And I will tell you that the air assist was probably the first thing I should have done and not the last thing. Uh, because air assist is pretty important. I've seen uh, a couple of uh, pictures where guys didn't have air assist on these and the flames from the wood uh, it, whenever you close this in you know it's sucking the air out and you can get flame up so if that wood catches on fire and you're not here to watch it that creates a real problem and I've seen them where this here was all melted and this was all scorched and I'm sure the unit was ruined at that point the air assist it blows the flames out so whenever they kick up that air assist is blowing that out. Not only that, but it helps. Now, you guys that are much more experienced in this than me, I'm assuming this is the case with anything. Whenever there's something hot and you have air blowing on it, it's going to make it a little bit hotter. It's kind of like um, whenever you do a fireplace and you go to, I believe it's stoking it, and you have like one of those billows and you blow on it and it gets that heat hotter so it can catch the coals or the wood on fire i'm guessing this would work in the same way that with this air blowing on that bean as as hot as it is it may even make it a little bit hotter to burn through better not only that but it keeps the flames for, from flaring up so i had the plastic one that you see on ebay all the time i only saw one guy that had this unit here if I find his link or whatever, I'll try to put it in there. If not, just go on eBay and look for uh, uh, air assist for K40s. This is copper. He's already got this bent, and it, I can't bend it. I guess if I got a pair of pliers, I could, but he already had this bent in this configuration. You come back here, and inside this plastic piece, I, I'm assuming, I'm not exactly sure how he made that. It might be on a 3D printer, but... Uh, he even gives you the screws because it's thicker than what the screws are down here. Uh, and he gives you this hose. So the hose, it comes down in here and it blows the air out on both sides and come down here. And you can actually, pre you can fill it pretty, pretty good. And then I have the hose running back here. Now, I need a different size hose. The one I had on there really didn't fit this the way I needed, but it was, I was able to get it to work. Let's just put it that way. Uh, once you get this, this hose here is only a few feet long, so it's not really long enough to go all the way around out through this hole. I have it coming out through here and then round over to the motor. It's not that long, so you're going to have to get some extra tubing. So I will show you what I got. I asked him, I said, what motor do you use? Because what I had on there before was one of those little plastic ones uh, that you get, and then it has like a little nozzle coming off from the side, and I forget... 10 or 14 bucks or something for them. Well, the problem I had, I had a, uh, a little fish tank aquarium motor that I thought would be strong enough. And it wasn't, and it wasn't hardly even blowing any air out of it. And whenever this thing would go back and forth and flames would flare up, it would melt that plastic. And whenever the plastic melted, the laser couldn't go through. Then the laser is trying to burn the hole back through again. So it, it, it just got to be a mess. That's why I went with this setup here. You don't have to worry about flames melting anything. It's already set up. And if it does flare up, then it, it's not going to melt anything or ruin anything. So that's why I like this setup. Nothing against you guys that make the plastic ones. I mean, those work if you got a strong enough motor. But you have to have a strong enough motor for that air to blow that out before the flames come up and melt your piece. Anyway, so my little rant on that. That's the next thing I want to talk about is the motor. And I, I think I might show this to you, but this motor, this is what I got. He suggested this. This is what he uses. I think a lot of guys use this motor here. 
I got this off Amazon. I paid around 39 bucks for it. Uh, it's at the end of 2020, so I don't know when you watch this, if these go up in price or not, but right now they're 39 bucks. And uh, you want to make sure that it's a uh, 120 volt, because uh, I've seen some that for 220, and you want the 120. And I got that, hooked it up, and it's over here. Excuse the mess of all my cords and USB cord stuff, but this is the motor here, and I have it running over here. It goes through the bottom. Now, some guys drill a hole on the side and make it a little bit more cleaner, you know, kind of like the hole here. They might drill out a hole over here so it just runs straight through, and that's fine too. No one's down here in the shop except me, so hey, you know, this works. Um, then I tape this here because the hose was so long it was just dangling, and I just went ahead and taped it to keep it out of the way. This hose here is soft enough to where the laser head can go back and forth and up and down and it doesn't really interfere with it. So, but that motor, uh, that that really put, puts out the air and I've already tested it. I don't get very many flame ups at all. The only problem I have, and it's not a problem and there's nothing you can do about it unless you can build a box for it, is the noise. And I'll turn this on. So if you're used to your laser and how quiet it is, because my laser is pretty quiet, now you've added this motor to it. I, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but you add this motor and it's kind of noisy. So you have to kind of get past the noise of that. I, I saw one guy asking, hey, is there a box? Even if you lift this up, I figured if it, it doesn't matter if it's on the table or not, it still makes the same noise. The only problem I would have if you put it in a box to quiet it, I don't know if it needs air flow to keep it cool. If it does, now you're going to have to have a fan or something built in to blow air on it to keep it cool. Not really sure about that, and I just did get it, so maybe it doesn't need to have air cooling it down. But that's the only thing. You just have to put up with the sound. So I'll turn all that off. And uh, and so that's, that's the improvements I made. Um, just wanted to... I've tried doing this video three times, i got to be honest with you guys, and I try to make it short each time. It always comes out to about 17 or 18 minutes long, and I'm sorry for that, but there's just so much I'm trying to get in about these K40 lasers. They're nice lasers. They're cheap. Um, I've had mine for a couple of years. It does the job. I mean, it, it cuts. You saw that piece. It's very intricate, very uh, nice. Uh, you just have to buy the other equipment with it to get it up to speed with some of the more expensive units. Now, if you just want to buy one and go with it, then get like a BMO or get a Glowforge or uh, those those are the two I know of. I think there's some others out there. We'll go with one of those. You know, you're going to be paying probably over a thousand dollars for them or like the Glowforge. I think it's two or three thousand dollars. You know, the cheapest one is like twenty four hundred bucks or something. Now, those are nice. There's nothing wrong with those. It's an easy setup. You just have it and there you go. You got the camera and everything. I think they might even be autofocused. That's that would be nice with this if it's autofocus. But I I got this whole setup with the extra stuff for probably under six hundred dollars. I'd say or seven hundred. You know I don't even think it's under seven hundred. I think it's less. So I was able to get this all set up. It works. It does the job. Does what I need it to. And until I if I make some money with it, fine. I'll upgrade and get a bigger one. The other thing with these are the beds here the beds are only they're, they're small you can see here's my hand and there's the bed so you're only talking like an eight by well here i got a plaque here and we'll just drop that in there this is an eight by ten size plaque so that's an eight by ten size plaque so you probably got maybe an extra two inches that you can use because you have to allow for the laser and for the railing. So you probably got maybe an extra two inches on the sides. And as far as back and forth, you might have maybe a half inch or so, not a whole lot. I would, to be honest, I wouldn't go much more than an eight by 11 or eight by 12. Uh, like I said, this is an eight by 10. But it's a little bit larger. I think this flat part here is 8 by 10 so it might be, I don't know, 
might be eight and a half by ten and a half or something, someplace around there. Uh, I'm guessing, but you can kind of see how big the bed is, and the bigger ones uh, you can do like uh, up to 16 inch wide and maybe 11 or 12 inches, you know, back and forth. So if you plan on doing bigger stuff, you might want to consider going, you know, paying a little bit extra getting the bigger ones. Reason I didn't was because I had to bring this down to my basement and um, it was light. It, it, I forget how much it weighed. I had somebody help me and it, for two people, it's real easy to move around. Got it down in the basement, no problem at all. If you get the bigger ones, whenever I looked at those, they were very heavy and some of them come with stands and bases and things. And to get that down in the basement, either by yourself, even if you had help, I would think it might be hard. So you have to consider where you're putting the laser at as well. Uh, so don't go so big to where once you get it, it's like, how am I going to get that there? You don't want to do that. So take that into consideration when you're buying one of these. The glow forwards and the BMOs, they're small. And I think they're even lighter than these. And you can move those around pretty easily. Um, some of them even have um, built, I think the BMO has built in, like I have a pump down below here. And it's in a five-gallon bucket with distilled water. Oops, covered that up. Sorry. It's got distilled water in it. The pump pumps through the laser and keeps the laser cold. Some of these have the water already built into them, so you don't have to have the pump, which is nice, too. But, again, you're paying over $1,000. So it depends upon what your budget is and what you plan on doing with it. If you're just planning on just playing around and you know, doing some things for friends or something you want to do, maybe make a few dollars here and there, uh, just a little bit of pocket change, then go with one of these. Learn how to use one of these. If your business builds up and it grows, well, to save the money and then buy you one of the bigger ones, buy you a fancier one. But uh, anyway, I'm running into 22 minutes here. I didn't plan on running that long. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, I'm not an expert on this. I've just played around with a lot and I've looked into a lot of things. And I just figured no one, I, I've seen videos on certain things, but not on things I was really wanting to know. So I had to play around with a lot. If this helps you guys out, I hope it does. That's great. If you have any questions, you can send me a message. Uh, I would try to answer those. Sometimes it takes me a few days before I see them, but I do try to get back with you guys. Thanks again. I appreciate it. And hit the subscribe button. Click the bell button. Share this if you know other people might have lasers. And uh, we will talk to you again soon. I hope you guys have a great day and uh, a good week. So we'll talk to you again soon. Bye.